Rico and our partners all throughout the island of Puerto Rico. We are so excited to be back at IPW. I don't know about you, but our experience so far, the energy has just been palpable, and we could not be more excited about what's happening today in Puerto Rico in travel and tourism and what lies ahead. Now, for those who may not be real familiar with Puerto Rico, uh, just a quick point of reference. We are, of course, a U.S. jurisdiction in the Central Caribbean, an island of about 150 kilometers east and west by about 50 kilometers north and south, uh, located 1,600 kilometers southeast of Miami. So, of course, we're a warm weather destination with beautiful scenery and beautiful beaches, but also a rich, vibrant culture. And what many don't realize until they actually visit the island is six unique, distinctive ecosystems, which provides an extraordinary array of experiences in Puerto Rico. But amidst all that's unique and special about the island, traveling to and throughout the island of Puerto Rico is just like traveling to and throughout any other destination in the United States. The same laws, the same customs, and while our primary language is Spanish, most of our residents are bilingual and speak English as well. And flying to Puerto Rico has never been easier for international travelers than it is today. We do have direct non-stop service from several US or several international markets. Uh, for example, uh, Iberia flies direct from Madrid. Uh, we have direct non-stop flights via Copa and also Avianca. But most international visitors fly through many of the major US carriers uh, that you would expect because we have direct non-stop service from all of the eastern seaboard markets from Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Washington, Charlotte, Atlanta, Miami. So getting to Puerto Rico is really pretty easy whether you're flying direct or not uh, connecting. And a little bit of IPW news. Uh, today it's being released. You're the first to hear this. United Airlines has announced for the first time ever direct non-stop service from Denver International Airport. So what we've seen uh, in the past year or two is a growth westward in the U.S. So we have direct non-stops from Chicago, Dallas, Houston, and now Denver International Airport. So getting easier and easier to get to Puerto Rico than ever before. So today we'd like to share a little bit about the island, the update on travel and tourism and also some of the exciting things that are underway that are, are really transforming our island. And let me start by saying this, if you're interested in a story about how travel can be a transformative tool for an island and for a tourism destination, uh, look no further than Puerto Rico. Uh, we have seen an amazing renaissance in our island, in large part due to the impact of travel and tourism. And I'll start with the economic impact, just to put that in perspective. Uh, over the past year, the past couple of years, really, we've seen amazing record-breaking numbers. 2021 was the all-time record year in travel and tourism, according to all the metrics, that spending, visitation, demand, and employment. 2022 beat all of those records, and so far, through the first four months in 2023, we're outpacing the prior year. So three record-breaking back-to-back years in travel and tourism, which really speaks to the power, the transformative power of travel and tourism. Uh, so for example, in the first quarter of this year, uh, we saw amazing record numbers at our airport. In fact, our airport director tells me it's the busiest first quarter on record since 1990. And last year alone, 5.1 million passengers traveling throughout or through the uh, Luis Munoz Marin Airport right in San Juan. In the lodging sector, extraordinary results. Uh, so far, the first quarter of 2023, 24% higher than the prior year, and 78% higher than pre-pandemic levels. So we're seeing extraordinary growth in the lodging sector, not only in terms of yield, but also in terms of demand. Uh, and the overall revenues for travel and tourism reached $8.9 billion. Now, I know for some of you, the market you come from, that may seem like a small number. When you think about a small island in the Caribbean generating nearly $9 billion of revenues from travel and tourism, especially in the context of some of the challenges that Puerto Rico has faced in recent years, and then consider that the tax impact for the first time ever exceeded $1 billion, $1.1 billion US dollars in tax revenue generated by travel and tourism last year. 
the transformative travel, the transformative power travel is at work for the island of Puerto Rico in a way that we have never seen. And it's leading an economic resurgence in our island and our region like none other. Maybe the most important number of all is the number of people employed. Today, more people employed in travel and tourism than ever before in our history. Now for us, that's an economic bright point, but when you think about travel and tourism and welcoming international visitors and the importance of having fully staffed businesses that are ready to welcome and attend to the needs of our visitors, uh, we're very, very fortunate that unlike a lot of destinations that are trying to get back to where they were a few years ago, we're actually at record numbers and we're seeing travel and tourism creating more job and career opportunities than ever before. So as you might expect, these are exciting times for our island and travel and tourism and it bodes very, very well for our future. And speaking of the future, one of the trends that we're really excited about is wellness. Now wellness travel to Puerto Rico is not necessarily new, it's been happening for years, but we have seen a flourishing number of opportunities arising throughout our island and wellness. And I think this aligns very much with a lot of the post-pandemic trends that many of us have been seeing where travelers are very, very focused on those meaningful, deeper connections and travel, uh, travel with a purpose. And sometimes that purpose is just to reinvest in yourself. And whether it's your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit, finding ways to connect with yourself and the travel experience that makes you healthier and more whole. And in Puerto Rico, we're an ideal destination for those seeking holistic experiences that bring that sense of well-being for you. And whether it's enjoying some of the natural wonders, like the only tropical rainforest in the U.S. Forest Service system, uh, maybe just exploring some natural areas and listening to the symphony of the Coqui, these tiny little animals with a huge voice that sing for you. Uh, these are extraordinary experiences that you just don't find elsewhere. Of course, we have a number of world-class spas that encompass some of the modern spa techniques with natural settings that really engage you in a way that is special and unique and transformative in and of itself. And then for some of us, that experience is really getting out and doing something, uh, perhaps working in one of our local farm areas where we're actually able to invest time and talent into helping them uh, with their regenerative travel experiences such as the farm to table movement that's flourishing throughout Puerto Rico. So a number of ways to really get engaged and involved and invest in oneself. And this is perfectly suited in Puerto Rico for the individual traveler as well as for groups looking for a, a group moment together, maybe a CSR opportunity to invest in themselves and the community around them. So uh, we've got a lot of information, more than we'll get in today, but as you can see, this is perfect for groups and individuals. If you'd like more information, check out our website at discoverpuertorico.com slash wellness retreats. Uh, you can also meet with any member of our team here this morning or at our booth, and we'd be happy to talk with you about this and share more information about what wellness travel is doing in Puerto Rico today. As you might expect, with all of this growth and the amazing success we're enjoying, there's been a bit of a transformation in our lodging product, and there's a lot happening here. Today, we have more hotel product, 177 hotels and 15,500 rooms available, more so than ever before. Uh, but it's not just more, it's the diversity that's coming about that is really special. Uh, so a few announcements to note here. Uh, the Hilton Corporation just recently announced that by 2050, uh, they plan to introduce 10 hotels with five brands across the island, not only in the San Juan area, which is tr the traditional hotbed of tourism activity, but in outlying markets like Dorado and Ponce. Uh, the pipeline of hotels under development represents the largest of Hilton's Caribbean growth markets by the number of hotels. Another exciting development, and if you've ever cruised through Puerto Rico, you may have been familiar with the hotel product right there at the cruise port overlooking the bay. Uh, that is undergoing a renovation. It will reopen in January 2024 as Hotel Rumbao. And this hotel is perfectly positioned for cruisers, but also for those who want to experience the historic city of Old San Juan, which just recently turned 500 years old. And amidst many other changes they're making, uh, they're now converting their outdoor terrace into a dining product. So we'll have a new dining product to share right there in the heart of the historic city of Old San Juan. Uh, another recent opening is the Don Rafa Boutique Hotel and Residences. And this is actually a hotel product influenced by the 1950s aura and architecture in Mirabar. 
which is a historic little community right in the heart of the tourism industry, but often overlooked because people are going to Old San Juan or they're going to the Condado area. They often don't venture into Miramar. And so this is kind of an older themed hotel in an historic area that has often been overlooked by visitors, but yet offers a lot in terms of dining and proximity to other tourism-oriented activities. The Ritz-Carlton San Juan in East La Verde, very close to our airport, uh, is soon to be reopening. And one of the most exciting recent announcements for us is the Nayara brand, a very well-known luxury brand, is opening up a resort, but not a beachfront resort. They're opening up a mountain resort right in the heart of the mountainous area uh, in Puerto Rico. And they're hoping uh, to break ground on that very soon. The Hard Rock Hotel chain just recently announced an exciting product right in the heart of Old San Juan. So this will not only appeal to cruisers, but it's also going to have group amenities and Hard Rock plans to open a 500-room Hard Rock Hotel right there. And this is an interesting story because the, uh, the location is a former government building. So this is part of the transformation that tourism is bringing to the island of Puerto Rico. And also the Baguera Plaza Hotel in Lajas, which is on the western coast of Puerto Rico. Uh, this is an adult-only property. It's recently been renovated and offers a number of gastronomic options. So when you add all of this new hotel product in the metro area, in the outlying areas, some very distinct brands and identities, and then add to that over 16,000 short-term rental options available via Airbnb and join a join uh, that's a 22% increase year over year. Uh, it's easy to see that travel is having an amazing impact on the island and its economy. Now, there's a few things you always need to know when you come to Puerto Rico and plan your trip, and hopefully some of you will be able to, to do this very soon. Uh, first and foremost is the gastronomy. It's always a part of the experience of Puerto Rico, and many, many ways to experience the flavors of the food and the spirits throughout the island. Uh, one of my personal favorites is the coffee haciendas. Just imagine for a moment. You're in the midst of the mountains, Caribbean seas off to one side, the rain forces off to the other. You can hear the sound of the coquis, and you can sense that rich aroma, the coffee, after you've toured a coffee hacienda, seeing how the coffee is harvested and processed, and then you taste that rich, bold flavor. That's an experience unlike any other in Puerto Rico, and it's available to visitors today at a number of our coffee haciendas. We also have farms like Fructos del Cucacabo that are leading the resurgence of the farm-to-table movement in Puerto Rico. And of course, um, I'd be remiss to not mention rum. We are the rum capital of the world. Now, part of the wellness trend we've seen recently is kind of a sober, curious avenue where people are not looking for uh, you know, uh, uh, alcoholic experiences, maybe you know, the Pina Plata, which is admitted in Puerto Rico, experiencing that without rum. So we are seeing part of wellness where travelers are maybe veering away from the alcohol-induced experience, but for a lot of people, that rum experience is still really important when you come to Puerto Rico. And given the fact that 70% of the rum consumed in the United States is produced in Puerto Rico, there's no doubt Puerto Rico remains the rum capital of the world, especially with the familiar brands like Don Cu, and over 80 different kinds of rums produced in Puerto Rico. So one of the best ways to learn about that is to tour one of our rum distilleries where you actually see the rum being created, learn the art and the history and the science behind it, and then of course taste the many concoctions that are available. But beyond the gastronomy itself, we know that today an important theme for travelers is sustainability. And Puerto Rico certainly lends itself to that. And that's been an important part of the resurgence of travel in Puerto Rico. And not just the environmental stewardship, but also the importance of cultural stewardship, which is incredibly important to an island with over 500 years of recorded history. So many efforts to elevate and harness the power of Puerto Rico's culture uh, are underway. And this is vital to us, to maintaining the art, the history, the culture, and all that feeds that robust history and culture that makes Puerto Rico such a special destination. If you're not familiar with Puerto Rico's heritage, it's a very special blend of African, Spanish, and Taino Native American origins which come together in a magical way. And you see it in the art and the architecture, you hear it in the music, and you most certainly taste it in the food. Uh, another way to experience that, of course, is through agro-tourism. Puerto Rico lends its support to six community-based projects that are providing outdoor nature-based experiences that are administered by local community organizations and actively con contributing to sustainability throughout our island. A Finca Conciencia in Vieques, 
and is dedicated to training agroecological production and the preparation of those uh, through a number of avenues distributed locally. Uh, Finca Oro Rojo, it's in Orocovas, the center of the island, uh, welcomes visitors to be part of the farming experience as they create uh, a chain between the farms and the local restaurants. And Earthship PR, a state-of-the-art self-sustainable property, uh, offers educational tours and short-term rentals of their off-grid sustainable tourism uh, look, uh, accommodations with recycled products. So a number of ways to contribute and experience sustainable tourism in Puerto Rico. Of course, we're a nature-based organization. Nature-based destination and ecological experiences throughout Puerto Rico are unique and inviting in many facets. Uh, a few of those are El Junque, uh, the tropical rainforest, which is open and welcoming to visitors with hikes and trails for all skill levels and all time budgets, whether you're there for a couple hours or a couple of days, plenty to experience in El Junque. The bio bays, three of the world bioluminescent bays, an extraordinary way to engage with Mother Nature and this, this fascinating uh, kayaking experience where when you touch the water, it lights up in this translucent blue experience, something you could really only experience truly when you do it yourself. And to see it and be a part of that is really a special trip for anyone looking for a special way to connect with Mother Nature. And we also offer one of the longest underground cave systems in the Western Hemisphere. So stepping off the beaten path for places like Canyon de Panama and Rio Camuy Cave Park, which was just recently reopened, which also offers cave repelling, a number of exciting adventures awaiting you uh, in the outdoor experiences. And then last but certainly not least for us, the history of Puerto Rico and what it offers in terms of historical tours and the ways to encounter and learn history. Uh, a number of uh, uh, activities that have become really popular in recent years is Loisa, which is the African cultural center of, of Puerto Rico, uh, where we learn about the bomba music and the African infusion of the historical uh, Puerto Rico um, ties to the African region, uh, as well as art experiences throughout uh, the island, not only in the metropolitan area, but many other areas as well. Contemporary chic art museums and installations, as well as street art installations that really speak to the vibrancy of the art scene in Puerto Rico. And all of this, of course, comes from that special blend of Spanish, in Taino, Native American, and African origin culture. Uh, but while a lot has changed in the product and the experiences, there are a few things that haven't changed. And one is the value proposition. For U.S. travelers, of course, it's beneficial to coming to Puerto Rico because no passports required, no currency exchange, and that's especially important today as many U.S. travelers are finding extensive delays in getting their passports renewed. And for travelers from outside of the U.S., the same travel customs and guidelines you would expect from any other travel experience in the United States. And with all of this and then a number of other amenities that you kind of come to expect nowadays when traveling throughout the U.S., whether it's finding a CVS or a Walmart, familiar brands that you know and trust, or also just finding the customs and travel habits that we've all become accustomed to. Puerto Rico provides a unique international allure and appeal, yet at the same time, the conveniences that we expect traveling in and throughout the United States. And for international travelers looking to connect Puerto Rico with another destination in the United States, that as well as the convenient air service is making it easy for international travelers to enjoy Puerto Rico today, perhaps more so than ever before. So with all of that said, I wanted to uh, leave you with a quick update on our marketing program. Uh, this is the brand positioning of Puerto Rico, Live Puerto Rico. And, uh, this is not just a campaign, this is really the brand positioning. And the words for me to describe Live Puerto Rico really can't do it well. Take a look at this video to see what Live Puerto Rico means to the visitors coming to Puerto Rico. <laughs> 